So after we have muscle contraction, we want to be able to relax our muscles. There's not a neurotransmitter to release directly onto that skeletal muscle to cause it to relax. It does not exist. So instead, we're going to stop the processes that we had occur, occur during relaxation, um, during contraction. So quick reminder, muscle contraction is going to involve an action potential in the motor neuron. The motor neuron is going to release acetylcholine and acetylcholine ACH is going to bind to receptors on the muscle cell. This is going to cause the initiation of an action potential in the muscle cell. This causes calcium release from the SER, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and calcium is going to bind to troponin, move trop troponin to move tropomyosin so that the actin binding site um, is exposed and actin can bind myosin. ATP is then used to generate cycles of contraction, contraction, um, brick sliding filaments um, to cause muscle contraction. So here's a single muscle fiber or cell that is going to shorten and that's going to generate muscle tension in the entire muscle which is the goal here, muscle tension generated. So when we want to stop this, we want to stop it quickly. Like we don't want our muscle to like slowly decide to um, slowly relax. We want it to like just happen. So one thing that's going to happen is just to think about this actually isn't part of, um, this is just kind of obvious, right? So we're going to have um, stop acetylcholine release. So we can stop the nerve from firing. Um, we're gonna see this actually when we get into brain communication, you can inhibit this neuron from firing. So that right makes some sense. You could stop, stop that. We also want to break down the acetylcholine that's in this neuromuscular junction. So we're gonna do that. Break down to remove it acetylcholine. This is going to be done by an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase. Esterase is the enzyme um, that breaks down acetylcholine. So it's not there anymore. Then it can't cause the muscle to have an action potential and cause more calcium to be released. We don't want that in this case. Last thing is we are going to um, move calcium back into the SER. So in other words, um, off of troponin. It should make sense why we want to do that. Um, when, we, when troponin has, has calcium, bound to it, the actin and myosin are able to bind because of that calcium that has moved tropomyosin out of the way. We want to we wanna stop that. Um, so I'll talk about that in a little bit more in just a moment. So let's see what this looks like. This was contraction. This picture looks similar, but this is relaxation. So here is acetylcholine, this little red thing here. And I'm going to add another protein, a thing in this neuromuscular junction, these little moon-shaped blue blobs are acetylcholine esterase, A-C-H-E. This is going to break down acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction. Okay, that's one thing that's happening. The other thing that's happening is calcium is being taken back up into the SER. So the SER is that funny shaped thing there. Let's label that. 
And in order for this to happen, ATP is required. Why would that be? Well, even after contraction has just occurred, calcium is still really high in the SER. High, high, high. It is gonna be lower in the sarcoplasm compared to the SER pretty much always. I just say always. What that means is if we want to move calcium from low to high concentration, what do we need? What do you think this guy is? An ATP pump. So this is required to move calcium from low to high concentration against its concentration gradient. The gradient for its movement is still out of the SER. That's what happens when we have an action potential occur in the first place. It just flows right out when those voltage-gated calcium channels open. So this is where a pump is needed. Again, the movement of calcium out of the way means that oops, that should be tropomyosin is now covering the actin binding site, the myosin binding site on actin. When actin and myosin release from each other, those sliding, those thick and some filaments slide back to rest. That's a lengthening of all these sarcomeres and muscle, the muscle lengthens when it relaxes. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. Okay, we have a learning check here. Looks like a lot, good review. Um, so the first five here are all related to referring back to that sarcomere, those zones, filaments, um, all that fun stuff. And then number six is more related to what I just talked about. So stopping muscle contraction. Which of these four things would stop muscle contraction? So please state, like name each one and say yes or no, and explain why for each one. <laughs> 